In this presentation, we will calculate an amortization schedule under the effective method for a premium. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna have our information on the left. We'll enter that into our worksheet here. Then we'll post a couple transactions based on that information so we can see what it's actually used for, why we're doing it. And then we'll post that to a trial balance so we can see the effect on a trial balance on actual accounts. So if we go back to the left here, this is gonna be the information we have. Face amount of the bond, 100,000. Stated rate, the amount on the actual bond, 12%. Market rate, something less, 10%. That's why we issued that at a premium rather than a discount. And then they're semi-annual. We pay every two, uh, every six months, two times a year. And two-year bond, meaning uh, it has two years and we pay every six months or four time periods, four six-month time periods. The issue price is gonna be 103,546, which of course is greater than the face amount, the difference between the two being the premium that we're issuing it over and above. Now, if we go to the to the trial balance, just to see this in context of what would it, what would it look like on the trial balance? Uh, we issued it for the, the sum of these two, 103, 546. That's how much cash we got when we issued the bond. We put the bond on the books as a liability of the 100,000. That's what we owe at the end of the bond term. And then we've got this premium, which is what we got over and above what we're going to pay back at the end of the bond term. Uh, when we make interest payments, we're going to actually make an interest payment that doesn't really cut into the principal. That's what's stated as interest on the bond. Uh, so, so we're not going to reduce in the bond payable as we make interest payments. But we have to do something to this premium that's got to go away somehow. Uh, we could. There's two methods we could make this go down. And no, remember what it's there for. It's a result of the difference between the market rate and the uh, stated rate on the bonds. So it's really interest. It's a result of interest. So we're going to reduce this and post it to interest expense in some way. One way we can do it is just to take this amount and divide it by the number of periods, four, two years, two times a year, and just take a straight method and allocate it out evenly. That would be the easiest thing to do. That'd be similar to like a straight line depreciation method, but it's not the most proper method. So the preferred method is the effective method, which is kind of similar to, the, to calculating a loan. Uh, amortization schedule where we're going to take the carrying amount and figure out how much the interest expense should be based on that. And so that means that the amount that will be allocated will differ. And that's what we'll use here. So if we go back to the left, uh, first we'll just look at the straight line method to compare and then we'll go to the effective method. So the straight line method, we would just say the unamortized premium would be the 100,000 minus the 103,546 or vice versa. And the carrying amount then will be the 100,000 plus the unamortized premium. And then we would just amortize the premium on a straight line method by taking the original unamortized amount divided by the number of periods, two years, two times a year, four periods. And that'll give us an even amount that we're gonna take it down by each time period. Then the unamortized premium would just go down prior amount minus that, making it go down to here. And the carrying amount will always be the face amount minus the unamortized premium. And then this will be the same. It'll go down by the same amount. So this will be whatever it was prior minus the same amount. The unamortized, the carrying amount then is the 100 minus the 1773 and so on and so forth until at the end, this amount goes down to zero, leaving us with just the bond face amount, which is what we'll actually pay, of course, at the end of the bond. Now we'll do this with the effective method and you'll see that these amounts will, will change slightly uh, based, on the, based on the carrying amount. So same starting point, the unamortized premium equals the 103, 546 minus the 100. The carrying amount is always gonna equal the uh, face amount plus the premium because it's always gonna be higher because it's issued at a premium. 
So then we're going to say the cash, and this is just going to be the cash calculation, and this will be the contract. So this is actually what we're paying. It's in the contract, the face amount that's on the bond times uh, 0.12, 12%. That's for a year though. So we're going to divide that by two. So 6,000. So what we're actually going to pay is going to equal one more time, the 100,000 times the 12% divided by two, because it's every six months. And then the bond interest is going to be based on this number, on the carrying amount. So that's going to be equal to the carrying amount, and then we're going to multiply it times the actual, or the market rate, the 12%. That would be for a year, so we divide it by two. So again, our calculation is going to be the carrying amount, 103, 546, times the market rate, 10%, that's for a year, divided by two for six months. So there's that. And then the difference between those two equals the 6,000 minus the 5,177 is the, is the uh, amortization change. So the unamortized premium then is what it was before minus that change. And then our carrying amount will always be equal to the, the face amount of 100,000 plus the unamortized premium. So we'll go through this a few more times. It'll be very similar here. We're gonna say the cash paid will be equal to, and again, we could just point to the 6,000, but I'll do the calculation again because we wanna really get down the difference between the, the stated rate, when to use it, and when to use the market rate. So it's gonna be the 100,000 times the stated rate, the rate on the bond, divided by two. And then the bond interest is gonna equal the carrying amount times the market rate. And then we're going to take that and divide it by two. And then the difference is going to be the 6,000 minus the bond uh, interest, the payment minus the interest. That'll give us the, the change in the premium. And then, and then uh, the amortization change. And then we've got the unamortized premium, which will be what it was prior, minus the change. And then we'll say that the carrying amount will always be equal to the face amount plus the unamortized premium. And that'll give us our new amount here. So we'll do this again. Again, the cash payment could be the 6,000, but we'll do the calculation. It's gonna be the 100,000 times the stated rate, the rate on the bond, divided by two. The bond interest is gonna be equal to the carrying amount times the market rate, divided by two, because it's six months, not a year. And then the difference is gonna be equal to the 6,000 minus the bond interest. And then that change in the premium is gonna be equal to the prior uh, amount minus the change. And then our carrying amount will be equal to the face amount of the bond plus the unamortized premium. We'll do this one more time and this should go down to zero now and this should go down to 100,000, the face amount of the bond. So the cash payment, again, it could equal this, but I'm gonna do it one more time over here, the 100,000 times the 12% the stated rate divided by two. The bond interest is the carrying amount times the market rate divided by two. The difference will be the 6,000 6, minus the bond interest. And that of course will bring this down to zero by taking the, un, the, the unamortized prior minus the change. And now the carrying amount is always the 100,000 plus the unamortized amount which is zero and that would be where we are left then we would pay off the bond now let's see what this would look like in terms of a journal entry if, if i was to journalize this first uh transaction we're going to say here's our trial balance over here where we have put the bond on the books so we, we issued the bond for 103,546. it's got a premium of this uh, 3546. Now we're going to make our interest payment and reduction of premium at the first six month time period. So we're going to, to do that, we're going to say, okay, uh, is cash affected? Yeah, cash is going down. We're going to make an, a cash payment. So I'll copy cash. We'll put that on the bottom here. So we're in Q4, right click and paste one, two, three. Now the payment we're going to make, I'm going to put a negative to make it a credit. And it's just going to be what we were given here. So we paid 6,000. And then the debit's gonna go to bond interest expense, but it's not gonna be for the 6,000. I'll put that up top now, we'll copy that. We'll put that up top. 
but it's not going to be for the 6,000 because we're going to have to amortize the, the premium as well. So I usually think about the premium then by going, so well, this is a credit. I'm going to have to debit it to make it go down. So I'm going to right click and copy. And I'll put that here. Now notice I haven't constructed this quite as nicely as we could have because we could have put the two debits on top. I'm just going to construct it in whatever may, way makes the most sense to me to build this thing. Uh, and so, and then we could reformat the debits on top later if we choose to do so, or you can leave it in whatever order would make most sense to you to go back to it and see it. So the bond premium then that we're going to pick up is going to be this amount, this uh, 123. And then the difference between those two, the 6,000 minus 123 will be the amount on the interest expense. I would do that with a negative sum going from the bottom to the top, or you can move this thing out of the way so that the two debits now equal the credit. The other way you can do this, of course, is to take the interest expense from the table here and then and then use the plug here uh, either way, just to see that it, the whole thing will balance out. Okay, so then if we record this, we're gonna say, all right, here's the uh, bond interest. Bond interest is down here. We're gonna say this equals the 5,177, bringing this amount up putting us out of balance, bringing net income down. Here's the cash. Here's the cash up top. We're in the middle column. W3 equals the 6,000, bringing this amount down. Here's the premium. Uh, here's the premium. We're in the middle column. W7 equals 8,823, bringing this amount down. So if we tie this out to the table, then we're going to say, all right, the ta it, we should have an unamortized premium 2723 and the carrying amount 102723. So the unamortized premium 2723 carrying amount is this plus this 102723. Let's do this one more time. You'll note that, of course, when you compare this to the to the straight line method, we have an even change here. I'm going to ungrain this and we'll record the second payment so six months have passed we're going to the second payment now we'll make this green okay and the the transaction will be the same i'm just going to copy the transaction but the numbers will change the cash is still going to be a credit of this six thousand the premium now change is going to be a debit of this number so that's going to differ and we can pull this from the table or we can use our negative sum plug formula of these. So that's the 5136, 5136. So if we post this out, and again, we're jumping six months ahead and obviously other activity would happen hopefully during that time period, but we're gonna post this uh, within the same information here and see what would happen. Concentrating of course on our bonds here. So here's our bond interest expense. Here's our bond interest. Double click on that. We're going to go to the end of it. Plus point to that 5,136, bringing this up, putting us out of balance, bringing net income down. Then we've got the cash. So here's the cash. We're going to be in the middle column. Double click on that. Go to the end of it. Plus point to the 6,000, bringing that amount down. Then we've got the bond premium. And here it is here. We're going to go to the middle column, double click, go to the end of it, plus, and pick up that number. And there we have that. So then we should be, according to our table, at a unamortized premium, 1,856, carrying them out 101,859. So here's our unamortized premium, uh, 1,856, and the carrying amount being the sum of those two, 101,859.